So this is a typical Florida meal. But people don't necessarily know how to hone in on an authentic Florida accent and it shows. So I do and skin. Hey y'all, it's Jayla aka Jay Chanelli on the internet. Welcome back to my channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join all 21,000 of us over here. Today we're doing the seafood mukbang. Okay, my very first on the channel. And we're doing this Florida style because I'm a Florida girl and we're talking all things Florida today. Specifically Issa Rae's brand new show called Rap Ish on HBO Max. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts as a Florida girl, go ahead and keep on watching. All right, y'all, so before we get into the TV show review, let's get into the food, okay? So if you don't already know, I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. Shout out to Central Florida. So where I'm from, we typically eat blue crabs, which is a completely different type of crab than what you typically see in like a seafood boil, where they usually use like snow crabs. On the internet, you might see king crab, dunganess, all that stuff. Blue crabs are always gonna be my favorite type of crab. So if you've never seen a blue crab before, let me go ahead and introduce you. Okay, so this is Mr. Blue Crab. Again, where I'm from, we like to do garlic crab trays, spicy garlic crab trays. So that is what you see sitting in front of me today. We got a spicy garlic crab tray. We have three blue crabs sitting here with some corn and potato. We also got the boiled peanuts on deck. And um, traditionally, we sit on the floor actually and eat on newspaper. I can't sit on the floor because y'all would not be able to see. So yeah, mommy, if you see this, I'm sorry, but I just needed to do this on the table and I will wipe the table down with Windex. So this is a typical Florida meal. So if you're from Florida, go ahead and wrap your area code in the comment section below. You know I'm 727 all day. Oh, by the way, this is Simba. Um, say hi to Simba. He's probably going to be around because I'm eating and he, he want a little taste, but he's not going to get a little taste, okay? We're going to talk about Rap Ish today, which is Issa Rae's brand new show on HBO Max. Y'all know I love me some Issa Rae down. Okay, love her down. Absolutely love Insecure, one of my favorite shows of all time. So when I found out she was coming out with a show that was going to be Florida based, specifically Miami based, I was all into it. If you don't know me in real life, you probably don't know, like, I am very proud of the state that I'm from. Even though y'all talk all this junk about Florida, about cutting us off, about how crazy the people are here. Baby, I love who I am. I love where I'm from. And I'm going to rep my state all day every day that is something that's super important to me and super important to my identity so it's very important to me to also consume media that represents me like for example this new show rap ish i might interrupt myself again to talk about food or to talk about show i just need y'all to follow what i'm putting down okay okay we're gonna start with our very first crab again this is a blue crab you start with the legs. We're going to break off each leg. We're going to eat the leg. And then we're going to eat the body. So you consume the whole crab with blue crabs, not just the legs. Like snow crabs. Okay? So Issa Rae's new show, Rap Ish. I'm saying ish, but the actual word is sugar, honey, iced tea. So the show, Rap Ish, is basically City Girl shenanigans on the TV screen. Okay? And fun fact, the City Girls are actually executive producers for the show. So uh, there are a lot of olds and references to, like, City Girl lifestyle in the show. And in fact, the actual title, I believe, is a reference to a City Girl song called Rap Ish. They Miami girls, they about the bag. So if they can get to the bag by doing this rap ish, then that's what they gonna do. And that's essentially what the premise of the show is as well. So the two main characters of the show are Shauna and Mia. Shauna is played by Ida Osman, who this is my first introduction to her as an actress. East African beauty, okay? She is gorgeous. You also have Mia played by Chameleon, who is actually a Florida rapper. She had a very viral song. And then I've heard about her again in the music game, but it was cool to see her transition into acting. By the way, in case you're wondering, if you're from Florida, you only eat crabs with these two fingers. These should be the only fingers getting dirty when you eat crabs. So those are the two main characters of the show. As far as the actual plot goes, Shauna um, and me are supposed to be old high school friends who are reunited. So Shauna's working in a hotel and she basically hates her job. She's rapping on the side doing conscious rap, which sucks. No shade. What to do? Because while she's working at this hotel, she also scamming. And that's something that you found out earlier on in the episodes, okay? So that is Shauna's story. Then you have Mia. Again, not really into this rap game. She is more of a social media influencer, has a great social media presence, and also does OnlyFans on the, a little bit on the side to take care of her family. She has a preschool age daughter, Melissa, with her baby daddy, Lamont, who is a producer, music producer, who is not really getting to much of the money either so money's just bad all around and they are both just trying to do better for themselves 
um, in the best way that they know how or the easiest way that they know how or whatever you want to call it, but they doing what they do. I just kind of dismembered that crab. You might see a lot of guts and stuff right now as I'm cleaning this. So if you have a very weak stomach, you might just want to look away. So that's kind of what they are. And then they come together, have happenstance, and they decide to make a rap group. By the way, in case you've never had blue crabs before, blue crabs are my favorite type of crabs because they are the most flavorful crab that you will ever eat. Most people that don't like blue crabs don't like them because they are a lot of work. I don't mind putting in a little bit of work for the flavor. Do y'all eat the lady fingers? But I want to know if y'all eat lady fingers in the comment section below. If you know what a lady finger is. If you don't, Google it. So yeah, y'all, that's like the general introduction to the show. My initial thoughts, obviously, love the representation, okay? We're getting a Florida show, although it is based in Miami, which is very typical of like people who are not from Florida. They always base stuff in Miami because Miami is like the only city they know enough about to really like kind of build upon that. Then they did an amazing job with the opening songs being Get effed Up and Trina, I Told Y'all. First off, mind your business. Bad, bad, every day like Christmas. Son, that's us. New car, paper tag, that's us. Crunk up. Get crunked up. Get crunked up. Because if nothing else, don't put you in Florida. And specifically in Miami, the music gonna put you in Miami. We know that, especially in the 90s and the 2000s, Miami bass was an integral part of like the music scene. And to this day, Florida artists, Florida music artists still have a heavy, heavy, heavy influence on the culture. Of course, like you cannot make a whole show about like being black and being black in Miami without including Haitians. When I tell you Haitian culture is Florida culture, so shout out to Maurice, the character Maurice. Dialogue is something that is really big um, in terms of adding credibility to a show, I think. For the most part, I think they do this pretty well. Um, there's definitely like the obvious things that you have to say in order to really make sure people know they're in Florida. Like, jit. Um, the way that we pronounce certain words, like saying, we gonna be out there. We coming back out there. I said this on TikTok, but I'm gonna say it here as well. Florida accents are so nuanced. Not a lot of people are very familiar with how people from Florida sound. I know that there's some level of familiarity with the Miami accent because a lot of very prominent Again, rappers are from Miami, but people don't necessarily know how to hone in on an authentic Florida accent and it shows. Specifically in other, I've seen other TV shows and other movies where we supposed to be in, in Florida and y'all talking like that? Absolutely not. So I think there is a little bit of work to do for those actresses and actors that are not from Florida and are trying to like to master or mimic that Florida accent. Obviously it's going to be easier for certain people like Chameleon's accent is on point. Obviously, she knows how to pronounce certain words because she's from Florida. That was something that was very important to me as someone who also just has an interest in language and language as a function of culture, especially when you talk about my culture. Her camera died, so now we're on the phone. Giving angles, okay? Giving different angles. And now I'm gonna open up the body. And to open up the body, I gotta borrow one of these claws. Sorry, thank you so much, sir, for your service. Or really, we're trying to break off the exoskeleton, right? This very hard armor that the crab has because we're trying to get to the soft, meaty insides. This exoskeleton back. And now we're left with the body of the crab. These are the lady fingers that I was talking about. Gills, some some organ used for respiration, but I'm gonna take all that out. It's a whole lot of intestines and dookie dook in there. Yeah, some other things that I just really like about this show is I love Chastity's character, the Duke of Miami. I'm new to her as an actor, but I've heard that she's been on, like she was on Bad Girls Club. And I just really enjoy seeing her on screen. I love her hair. Now y'all know. I'm all about some hair. That's one of the first things I look at when watching any show is the hairstyle. For some reason, it didn't start getting hot, like spicy, to this last crab. Let's talk about seducing and scheming. Their whole punchline is kind of like the mantra for the whole show. So Mia's seducing, only fans, you know, getting her bad that way. Shauna's scheming, getting lips at the uh, Women. One of the lessons I think Mia teaches Shauna in this whole show, I think she teaches her a lesson about agency. Like your woman empowerment looks like putting on a mask and rapping about student debt loans. But what makes Mia feel, feel empowered is her exercising her agency a different way. It's her utilizing her body that's gonna be sexualized anyways and being able to capitalize off of that. And I think one of the lessons being taught within the plot of the show and also just from the show as a whole is that women have agency. Black women in particular have agency. 
to do as they please, especially as a means of survival. So that's one of the key things I take away from the seducing scheme. While we acknowledge that, we also have to acknowledge the dangers of seducing and scheming. And I think both characters find themselves in precarious situations because of how they choose to make their money. Tamia's point is no fault of her own. People just take advantage. But again, just tries to highlight the dangers of or the realities of these situations because danger is everywhere, right? Not just these situations in particular that are dangerous, but it is important to highlight these dangers in these particular situations so people don't jump in half cocked, so to speak, without knowing the fullness of what they're getting themselves into. In Shauna's case, I feel like she's gonna go to jail soon. Hopefully not, girl, because I don't think Shauna can do jail. Finishing up this last piece of crap. If you don't have like very strong teeth or you never cracked the crap before, just be careful. Other very cool things about this show is that as these characters are building their music career and releasing new songs on the show, they're also releasing songs in real life underneath their character name. So there's a whole Spotify playlist dedicated to songs that Mia and Shauna are making on the show are actually like streamable songs on these music platforms, which I think is a genius idea on Issa Rae's part. Yes, look at that. So you definitely can go stream to a deuce and skin. We ate our crabs. I'm not really gonna bother with that potato and stuff right now. Let me get into these boiled peanuts and see how these boiled peanuts taste. Let me tell y'all what Issa Rae did. Again, genius marketing, but had us hot. Mm, I don't even care for these boiled peanuts so much. There is a character on the show, Rap Ish, whose name is Rain Rain, white girl, Caucasian girl, and she's a rapper. And her whole character is kind of part of Shauna's villain origin story in the sense of like people like Rain Rain are got looting rap because it's just appropriative nonsense. But let me tell you what Issa Rae did. Before actually launching this show, they have this Caucasian lady posting videos on social media as if she was a real life artist. So she's posting these appropriation vids or whatever on the internet with no context. You know, black outrage is a new marketing tool. So of course people on Twitter seen it, blew it up, talking about what in the world is this? And it ended up just being promo for the show. So Issa Rae, you got us good girl, you got us good on that. I know this corn bit in the screen for like the longest, so let's see what it's saying. Right. Mm -mm. way too cold can't eat that but yeah y'all i think i'm gonna wrap it up y'all let me know what y'all think about rap ish in the comment section below this video probably is not going to come out until after the finale so thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it remember to hit that subscribe button also like this video so youtube can share with other people and i'll see y'all in the next one bye